director around here who happens to be around this week. His name is Bruce Bly and one of his songs we're going to do next. It's called Calling Forth the Light. Right. So Bruce, I hope you can hear this. <laughs> Shine. 
turns right now for eternity. Joy, we are calling for the joy. We are calling for the joy of God. We are calling for the joy. It shines in you. Well, good morning and welcome to Unity Center of Walnut Creek. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I think you found us. <laughs> this is fantastic. It's my pleasure to welcome you to our service this morning. Hey, if you're experiencing unity for the first time, whether here in the room or online, we're adopting you right now, right here, into our spiritual community. So welcome. And we truly appreciate you being with us. We regularly join in affirmative prayer and, and these statements during our service, and most of them are found in the inside cover of your bulletin. And um, others can be found in your hearts. <laughs> <laughs> um, and on the monitors, of course. Uh, before we begin our service, let's take a moment to pull out our cell phones and make sure that we're not in competition with Mud Daddy and Mud Mommies. <laughs> We have Mud Mommies here to, to, today because Mark had a, a personal situation come up, so we're just delighted to see this new mix. <laughs> Let's see how it goes. <laughs> um, we'd also like to welcome our online friends. Hello, everybody. Say, turn around, say hello. It's great to have you guys with us today. Your presence adds to our spiritual community, of course, and, and doubles or even triples or quadruples our numbers, a lot. A whole lot. <laughs> we appreciate you guys. We're, okay, so let's, um, let's start by finding out where we begin. We begin with our source. So let's just connect with that for a moment. We'll open our service by focusing our attention on our opening affirmation. So please join me prayerfully and powerfully together. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, the all-loving goodness of God. All right. Let's just give that an opportunity to drop to that place inside that needs the truth of that statement, not the words, the truth the most. Together. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, the all-loving goodness of God. And once more, deeply, sincerely, in a healing way, together. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, the all-loving goodness of God. And as that stirs within your soul, please join me in reading aloud the statement of our unity found on your bulletin and on the wall together. God's love is within each of us, 
guiding us to dynamically express our wholeness, wisdom, and abundance. We acknowledge the universal wisdom in the Christ teachings and in all spiritual paths. I now choose to open to the presence of divine love and to be changed at death. Throughout this sacred time, God is uplifting me and through my heart, the world. Andrew Messitz will be reading our daily word today. Good morning. Good morning. The word of the day is world peace. Let there be peace on earth, and let it begin with me. These words remind me of where to begin when I pray for world peace, within myself. When I pray, I am making a difference. My thoughts and prayers have the power to affect me and those around me in positive ways. As I affirm peace, I feel peaceful in mind and heart, and I express that peace to others. My expressions of peace create a chain reaction that travels from one person to another, opening minds and hearts to the blessing of love, compassion, and understanding, attitudes that help create peace in the world. Today I do my part in establishing world peace by holding positive thoughts and expressing the indwelling peace of God. The Bible statement for today is, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world, John 9, 5. The affirmation for today is, as I know peace within my heart, Peace prevails in my world. I invite you to repeat it with me. As I know peace within my heart, peace prevails in my world. Thank you. Please join us in singing this simple truth. And there are so many ways we support that in every one of us here at Unity. I'd like to highlight a few of those coming right up. And others, of course, can be found in your bulletin and in our center point and, of course, our weekly email newsletter that you can get right in your email news box, inbox. So, so there are so many ways also in which to uh, keep in touch with your spiritual self and have fun with your Unity community. Popcorn with purpose is one of those ways. It meets the first Friday of each month, and there are three incredible movies coming right up. Um, also, uh, the second Saturday in February, join Reverend David uh, for HeartMath's scientific discoveries which reveal the true power of our hearts. That's the second Saturday in February. Uh, but... Uh, the greatest spiritual event we have every year is our annual <laughs> crab feed. <laughs> no, it's true. 
This incredible event is the last Saturday in February, and it will be complete with great food, dancing, raffle prizes, many extras. Did I say dancing? <laughs> dancing, too. <laughs> dancing is a spiritual, especially if you watch me. Um, <laughs> Um, and now a welcoming introduction for today's service from Reverend David. I know you're going to have a wonderful service this Sunday. I'm at Unity Village, and so I'm sending my heart your way to join with everyone. And I've left you in wonderful hands. The people who are guiding our service today are our teenagers, our youth of Unity, our YUers. They are wonderful people. They have been an inspiration to me as I know they will be to you. Have a great time. Hi, I'm Kayla. And if you're here with us for the first time, we are pleased that you have joined us. We would like to extend our special blessings to you. We rub our hands to focus our energy and we say together, we love you, we bless you, and we behold the Christ light shining through you. We would appreciate it if you would raise your hand so we can acknowledge you with the shell On that lay is an affirmation that says, just as God has a design for every shell in the sea, God has a design for your life. You are invited to join us on the patio after the service where we have the opportunity to get to know you. Thank you for joining us today. Enjoy taking the mom this moment to greet the people around you.
Thank you for that. Hello, my name is Isaiah, and this is Nathaniel and Arnie. We would like to take you into a guided meditation, so if you could please sit on the edge of your seat with your hands on your knees, palm up, and slowly close your eyes. Thank you. Imagine you're in a space that is completely white. There is no one in this space except for you. This is your own space. You start to walk. And you find yourself coming closer to something. It is an elevator. And you come closer to it. You're at the elevator. The elevator opens up and you step inside. It has a familiar scent. There's a lot of buttons on the wall, moments of your life. But there's one that sticks out to you the most. And you press it. You start to go down and down, deeper. Where will it take you? Once the elevator door is open, before you is your happiest childhood memory. What do you see? Do you hear something? Can you smell or taste anything? <clears throat> Who is your role model? Who did you look up to? Did you want to be something when you grew up? What emotions do you feel?
You start to walk back to the elevator. But before you step inside, you turn around and you bless this memory. This is a sacred memory for you and you only. You step inside. The door is closed behind you. And you start to rise. It is going higher and higher and higher. <coughs> the air is getting lighter. If you felt any tension or negative feelings, they have left you. Slowly escaping your body. You find yourself again in this white space that you won't knew once before. You find the chair that you're sitting in. You feel it underneath you. You feel the ground underneath your feet. You feel your hands. Your face. Please keep the si silence for a few moments. You may open your eyes. I'd like for you to say this affirmation after me. I am all that I can be. I am all that I can be. And I live my life happily and joyfully. Again, please. I am all that I can be. I am all that I can be. And I live my life happily and joyfully. And I live my life happily and joyfully. Thank you. Perhaps a few words of a parent to a young child. Journey through 
our lives to what will be. And in the morning of my life, and in the evening of my day, I will try to understand what you say. Through all that life can bring to you, only true love will see you through. And we'll stand beside you now What you say Rivers of endless tides have passed beneath my feet And all too soon they had me standing on my own Then when my eyes were closed you And in the morning of my life, and in the evening of my day, I will try to understand what you say. Through all that life can bring to you, only true love will see you through. And we'll stand beside you now in what you say. Daphne. At the YOU, we were trying to think of a sort of subject or theme to base today's message on. Something that would leave the people of Unity feeling inspired, motivated, and maybe even changed for the better at some level. The topic that stood out the most to us was to be like an innocent child again. As we mature, life for us gets more and more complicated. We get involved in more social activities, we suddenly become concerned with our appearance. We often attempt to judge, analyze, and measure everything around us, including being much harder on ourselves. We take anxieties over political and world issues. We start to fret over the future and the future of the whole world. It is a lot to take on. I don't mean to imply that these things are necessarily bad. I just think that we would probably be doing ourselves a big favor to take an occasional time out to bring a Christ-like or childlike peace and innocence back into our everyday lives. 
trying to recall the first few years of life. We almost always accepted and loved everyone no matter who or what they were. We had a sense of awe and wonder as we just observed the people and the world around us. We trusted. We were probably quite positive and excited about life. And as children, we brought light and joy into others' lives just by being present. We were more in the moment, and when we are like that, others can't help but relax and move into the moment with us as well. We laughed at the silliest little things and used our creativity freely, even to the point of being ridiculous. Some of you may be familiar with a book by Robert Fulgham called Everything I Needed to Know I Learned in Kindergarten, <laughs> in which he states, think of, what, think of what a better world it would be if we all, the whole world, had cookies and milk about 3 o'clock every afternoon and then lay down with our blankies for a nap. <laughs> Or if all governments had a basic policy to always put things back where they found them and to clean up their own mess. <laughs> <laughs> and it is still true, no matter how old you are, that when you go out into the world, it is best to hold hands and stick together. Other points that he remembers learning at kindergarten age were the following. Share everything. Play fair. Don't hit people. Put things back where you found them. Clean up your own mess. Don't take things that aren't yours. Say you're sorry when you hurt somebody. Wash your hands before you eat. Flush. Live a balanced life. Learn some and drink some and draw some and paint some. And sing and dance and play and work every day some. We should ponder these things and then consider how we might be able to implement the good of those basics into our current adult lives. Because at some place within ourselves, we are all still children and always will be if we look deeply enough. And the child within us deserves to be loved and taken care of in a way that brings about balance, health, and joy. One personal experience that I deal with is my sleep schedule. I think about how when I was five years old and it was nighttime and I was tired, I would just relax and pass out into a blissful sleep. That was constant. I didn't struggle with it or worry in bed at night. I just trusted that it was time to sleep and quickly gave into nature and drifted into slumber. As a teen, I notice I'm be beginning to wrestle with nature now. I sometimes think too much at night, trying to figure out my next day, or I might just ignore my body signals to sleep and stay up and read or work on some project that leaves me tired the next day. I notice how I'm getting older, I fight natural patterns a little bit. So I want to remind myself of how healthy and happy I was when I was very small and life was simple and try to implement that reality again. And now we have a personal experience. Hello. Hello, I'm Alex. I've been given the opportunity to share some of my personal experiences regarding the importance of childhood with all of you. I've noticed as I have grown into a young, intelligent man that I have began to love life a little less, live life a little less joy focused and more practical and productive focused. While this may make life sometimes smoother, it's not always as free spirited. So about half a year ago, I find my friend and I skating around town, you know, having a great time, when bang, he loses his balance and snaps his skateboard. He, so he then proceeds to dealing with it like most teenagers would, which I'm not going into detail for obvious reasons. <laughs> so I think to myself, that's really terrible. I mean, I feel really bad, but there's nothing I can do. But then I suddenly find myself tapping into my child side and saying, you know, I can probably give you one of my sk spare skateboards. My young adult side is thinking, you're crazy, just stop talking. But it had been done. Instead of becoming anxious and nervous, I was overwhelmed with joy. Looking, but really like, looking back on this particular event, I realized that the, that the importance of not always being Mr. Practical and, you know, seeing what your inner child has to say, because it has a voice. Thank you very much for listening. A quote in Matthew 19:14 reads, Jesus said, Let the little children come to me, and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. I hope that we can take the word of this wise master into our own hearts, and remember not to hinder the child within us. Thank you.
Good morning. My name is Marcel. And I'm Heather. So we would like to invite you to join us in an exercise to help you get in touch with your inner child. We handed out paper and colored pencils with your bulletin. So if you don't have one, please raise your hand and our ushers will give you some. <laughs> raise your hands really, really high. And the people who are watching online, you can do this as well at home. So um, we're going to do two drawings. So on one side of the paper, please draw yourself as a child doing something that made you feel happy. This doesn't have to be perfect, just a representation, <laughs> or maybe even a list. It's just, just a representation. For the next two minutes, I'm going to say some words that you can keep in mind while you're drawing yourself as a child. Love. Protection. Oh. 
Now, please take a moment to complete your drawing. Turn your paper over. On this side of the paper, draw yourself as you are now, doing something that makes you shine. In other words, it gives you the same feeling as when you were a child and you were doing the activity from your first drawing. Again, I'm gonna say some words while you draw yourself shining now. <laughs> Joy. Blessing. Grace. Passion. <laughs> Take another moment to complete your drawing. A few questions to ask yourself. Did the first drawing stir up positive memories for you? How did drawing these pictures make you feel? Marcel, remember when you draw, used to draw pictures when you were a kid? Yeah. When you made a really good drawing, where did you want your parents to put it? I always liked when they put it on the refrigerator. <laughs> and how did it make you feel when, you put it on, when they put it on the fridge? I felt really proud of it. When you're proud of what you've accomplished, you are truly able to shine. So when you get home, please put this drawing on the fridge for the next week, or somewhere you can see it. Because you can be proud of your inner child. And finally, an affirmation. Repeat after me. God loves me. God loves me. Just the way I am. Just the way I am. God loves me. Just the way I am. God loves me. Just the way I am. God loves me just the way I am. God loves me just the way I am. And you're reminded to take these drawings home. <laughs> Isn't it a wonderful, wonderful thing when our children teach us Have a goal that you can live.
If you would like prayer support for challenges and celebrations, our heart ministers will be available after the service in the sanctuary and on the patio. Our heart ministers are wearing the lavender stools. You are also invited to place a prayer request in our prayer box by the front door and in the book center. We will be praying with you throughout the week. It is time for prosperity celebrations. Please take out your gift. Hold it in your hand. Feel your love as you feel your gift. And join me in our affirmation. Divine, Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Ushers, please be prepared, be prepared to pass the baskets. Now we're going to lead you in the Magic Penny song. This is a song that we sing in our youth rallies for our prosperity celebrations. If you know this song, feel free to join in. Love is something you give it away. Is it? Love is something if you give it away. You give it away. You give it away. Love is something if you give it away. You end up having more. Just like a magic penny, you hold it tight and you won't have any. When you spend it and you'll have so many, you'll roll all over the floor. Woo! Love is something and you give it away, you give it away, you give it away. Love is something if you give it away, you end up having more. Just like a magic penny. Hold it tight and you won't have any. Lend it, spend it, and you have so many. You'll roll all over the floor. Something if you give it away. Give it away. Give it away. Love is something if you give it away. You end up happy. In the light, in the light, in the light, in the light, we 
children. Children, you are loved, special, and important. God loves you, and so do we. Please stand and join us in our prayer of protection. surrounds us, the love of God enfolds us, the power of God protects us, and the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. And our peace song. Brother 
brothers and my sisters. Oh, 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 oh.